In your 30s, you have this feeling like time is running out. You're not a kid anymore, and when you look around at other people your age, it seems like they're all crushing it in life. In the book When by Daniel Pink, he says that 48% of people who finish marathons are 29, 39, or 49. You start to feel like, I need to get my shit together. In my late 20s, I felt like I was ticking all the boxes. I had a great wife, a great job, and I was about to buy my first house. But inside, I felt like something was missing. When I turned 30, everything changed for me. And over the next three years, I lost 100 pounds, sold everything, moved to a different country, and started my first business. It is never too late to start over again. Here are four lessons I learned starting over at 30. Number one, money and success are meaningless without your health. Despite winning at work and in my relationships, I found myself looking in the mirror and thinking, is this what I want my life to be like? Look, when I was growing up, we didn't have a lot of money. So when I got some money, I bought everything I couldn't have as a young adult. A fancy car, we moved into a big house, we started to travel. I took my wife to the fanciest restaurants in Napa or Las Vegas. I paid for happy hour with all my friends. Anything we wanted, we would get it. But I was also 300 pounds. And I was prioritizing short-term pleasure over everything. Eventually, the stress of being 100 pounds overweight and the high stress job led me to the emergency room with chest pains. And I remember the doctor looking me in the eye and saying, dude, you are way too young to be in here. It was a wake up call. I had everything I wanted, but I wasn't happy. What's the point? If you have all the money in the world, but you're not there to enjoy it. If you find yourself looking in the mirror and not liking what you see, no amount of external validation is going to make you happy. Now, despite the fact that I had all this money, it actually took me a long time to find a trainer or a program that would help me lose weight. But eventually I did, and through a combination of weightlifting, cardio, and learning what to eat, I lost the first 45 pounds in about three months and completely changed my idea of health and fitness. But the biggest change was in my confidence. I started standing up taller, dressing a little nicer, taking care of my appearance, and people started to notice. I started to get more opportunities as a result of this. One of those opportunities led to a dramatic shift that changed my life even further, and that leads to point number two. At any given point, you are allowed to renegotiate the rules that govern your life. Now, I felt like I was on track. I was losing weight, I still had a great job, and we were about to buy the house we were living in but I was still restless, still searching. One day during another boring meeting with the Europe office, my counterpart who was about to go on maternity leave jokingly said, hey, why don't you come over here and take over my job while I'm gone? I stopped. I don't know what happened during the rest of that meeting because I couldn't get that out of my head. We had never traveled to Europe growing up. I only had two stamps on my passport and one of them had happened for a work trip just four months ago. The idea of moving to a different country and actually living there was like a dream. But we were about to sign the papers on a new mortgage and dump all of our life savings into this house we were living in. I went to my wife that night and I said, hey, so what if instead of buying this house and spending all of our money, we just sold everything and moved to London for a year. We just said, fuck it, the American dream can wait. Let's go. It was one of the best decisions we ever made because when we got there, we saw it was a whole new group of people with a whole new set of expectations. And just like here in America, 90% of them were living the life that someone else told them to live. The British dream, work for a bank, go drinking on the weekends, travel to Spain for holiday, watch football, repeat. But all of the rules of the British dream and the American dream are just made up. And if you want to change them, you can and you should. So when we got to London, there were no gyms that I could go to that would help me continue my weight loss journey. So I decided to start one. Despite having no business experience, no contacts, we were in a foreign land and we weren't even citizens. No one's going to live your life for you. So you might as well do it the way you want to do it. Now opening that gym taught me one of the biggest lessons that is actually point number three. Keep the main thing the main thing. I made a lot of mistakes when I started that first business. I spent thousands on equipment and a location, even wrote a business plan. I was about to spend thousands more on a website and landing pages about the only thing I did right 
was to put up a one page coming soon web page and spend a few bucks on Google AdWords to send traffic to it. That led us to our first customer who signed up on the day that we opened. At that moment, I realized 99% of business advice is irrelevant for new business owners. You don't need an LLC, a social media profile, a landing pages, a website, location equipment. You don't need any of that stuff. You need a customer. Your business does not exist until you have your first customer. If I had found my first customers before I started that business, I might have saved myself thousands of dollars and lots of headaches. I might not have even needed a location. From that moment, all I could do was focus on getting more people like that first guy. I did free sessions, I talked to people on the street, and I asked everyone I knew for referrals. No customers equals no business. Keep the main thing the main thing. Number four. Success is not a straight line. I had lost 45 pounds. I had sold everything and moved to a new country. I had started a new business. I was crushing it. Except I still had 50 pounds to lose and my business was barely breaking even and my wife was now pregnant and now I had two jobs in a foreign land and we had no help. There were so many nights during that time where I was just thinking, fuck it. This whole idea is stupid. At the time, I remember reading a quote from Robert Kennedy that said, if you never quit, you never fail. And I just kept that going in my mind over and over again. Never quit, never fail. Despite what the internet tells you, success is not a straight line. It took me 18 months to lose another 50 pounds. It took me two years to earn enough money with my business to pay my bills. You are going to have a lot of ups and downs in your journey. In fact, if you don't, you won't appreciate it when you get there. Working hard, getting a good mentor, focusing on your goals, these are all important, but each one alone is not gonna get you where you need to be. You have to be on a mission and be willing to do whatever it takes for as long as it takes in order to get there. But most importantly, you have to be willing to accept that you're not always gonna get the outcomes you want. In those times you don't, you have to be willing to overcome every single obstacle that stands in your way until you get to where you want. If you never quit, you never fail. If you're in your 30s or approaching your 30s and you're starting to think, it's too late for me, think about it like this. Life is short, but it's also long. And if you can take two to three years of dedicated effort, you will be surprised at how much you can accomplish. The key is to pick anything that takes you in the direction of where you want to go and just focus on that for two to three years. You'll be surprised at how far you get. If you're new to this channel, my name is Jay. This channel features one to two videos a week on topics around business, health, personal development, books, and other fun experiments in living. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. Stay focused, stay curious, and keep showing up. We'll see you in the next one.